this video is going to be on severe acute asthma so what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss about the clinical features investigations certain management treatment protocols and complications of severe acute asthma I will not go into the pathophysiology because it itself is a very long topic so asthma is produced due to airway hyper responsiveness to certain allergens certain predisposing factors like cold water can also produce asthma so any ca these kind of triggers from the external environment causes airway hyper responsiveness because of which there is an inflammatory response in the airways and there is mucosal edema and which ultimately lead to narrowing of the airways there is excessive production of mucus which blocks the airways so all these things uh, contribute towards the pathogenesis of asthma so what is severe acute asthma <coughs> severe acute asthma is an emergency it can be seen in patients who have previous history of asthma so how do we recognize a patient of severe acute asthma we look at the clinical features so the patient pre presents with coughing wheezing and shortness of breath these three features are there the most important being shortness of breath as well as wheezing wheezing is something that you can hear and the shortness of breath will make patient extremely uneasy and the patient will present to you with these features on examination you can see that the chest wall recession is present there is inability to complete sentences in one breath if you ask him to speak a sentence he has to stop in between to take breaths use of accessory muscles your trapezius sternocleidomastoid which signifies respiratory distress and extremely important are these last three points one is respiratory rate greater than 25 per minute it is very important it shows respiratory distress and in almost all literature this is how it is defined respiratory rate get greater than 25 pulse greater than 110 and presence of pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes is a special kind of phenomenon it is not a pulse palpation finding per se it is when a sphygmomanometer is attached to a person's arm and on inspiration there is a fall in the blood pressure of us uh, of systolic blood pressure greater than 10 millimeters of mercury and that is called as pulses paradoxes usually a pulse reduces by 2 to 4 millimeters of mercury when we inspire but in case of a person with severe acute asthma or status asthmaticus there is going to be pulses paradox paradoxes which is a decrease of greater than 10 millimeters of mercury on inspiration that is a systolic blood pressure okay so now you have got a, a, a clinical picture of coughing wheezing shortness of breath and you have seen uh, rece recession of the chest wall use of accessory muscles respiratory rate pulse 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 pulses paradox is present okay the question is is further worsening of the clinical condition possible answer is yes it is possible how see what happens is there is uh, inflammation going on continuously and this inflammation has gone to such an extent that all the airways are kind of blocked so this further narrowing of airways stop the movement of air and that is how worsening happens so what happens is when there is air way when there is no movement of air through the airways there is decrease in wheeze because wheeze is produced due to the movement of air through the airways narrowed airways so airways are so narrow that even air cannot pass through and so wheeze is initially when wheeze was present but now wheeze is not there this ultimately give rise to some uh, on auscultation there is going to be silent chest and this is called as silent type asthma so is that, is that enough for us to ev evaluate 
a case of asthma no that is not enough there are other other features that we have to look for to classify whether it is a life threatening severe acute asthma or not life threatening is the worst that is coma or altered mental status P- patient usually goes to coma because there is carbon dioxide retention and there is hypoxia which makes the patient go to coma or pers- patient has altered mental status there is reduction of wheeze because air cannot flow through there is cyanosis again because because of carbon dioxide hypoxia and carbon dioxide retention feeble respiratory effort the patient is now t- uh, tired of uh, breathing uh, very fast and so the there is uh, some certain kind of fatigue and there is feeble respiratory effort initially there was tachycardia and uh, just initially there was tachycardia but now the patient moves into bradycardia and there is also associated hypotension so bradycardia hypotension feeble respiratory effort cyanosis reduction of wheeze coma and altered mental status these all are features of life threatening asthma next we move on to investigations what are the investigations that we would like to do investigations should be one the first one is peak expiratory expiratory flow rate pefr peak expiratory flow rate can be measured when you give the device to a patient and ask the patient to blow it blow into it and when peak expiratory flow rate is less than 30% which means that there is severe airway obstruction arterial blood gases also needs to be done because you can have you can check out partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of carbon dioxide ph to find out whether any metabolic acidosis is happening or not pao to paca to uh, uh, will ultimately give us a picture of whether the patient is going into type 2 respiratory failure or not if the patient is going into type 2 respiratory failure it is required that we may need to put the patient on mechanical ventilation so we have to do arterial blood gases and most of the time arterial blood gases need to be repeated multiple times because you have to keep checking whether the patient is going into respiratory failure or not and whether mechanical ventilation is going to be required or not then what about pulse oximetry pulse oximetry is very important because throughout the management of asthma when i'll talk about it later you it's important to m- maintain an oxygen saturation greater than 92 and so pulse oximetry is going to give us uh, the value of oxygen saturation over here is mentioned men- spo to maintain over 90 some book says it's 90 but many many book also says 92 majority of the people say 92 so spo2 should should be maintained above 92 and for that pulse oximetry is required next check chest x-ray chest x ray is required but for why uh, chest x ray one uh, for diagnosis purpose is not required but in case of a patient with severe acute asthma if you take a chest x ray you will see a hyper inflated lung not only that uh, chest x ray is important because a patient of severe acute asthma can move into pneumothorax which is a com- dreaded complication of this condition and to check to check whether pneumothorax has developed or not x ray needs to be taken next what are the complications complicate it's important to know the complications beforehand because it will help us prevent uh, the complications number one is dehydration the person is breathing very fast constantly breathing they ultimately move uh, ultimately patient have dehydration and when there is dehydration the electrolyte balance kind of goes ha- uh, haywire a pneumothorax i have already discussed why pneumo how pneumothorax is a direct complication of acute severe acute asthma and there's also acute cord pulmonary next how do we uh, manage what what kind of treatment do we give for severe acute asthma the management of severe acute asthma uh, for management these points need to be kept in mind so there are a lot of options as you can see but the first thing first thing the first thing that you have to do is arterial uh, uh, is airway breathing and circulation this is the first thing that needs to be done a b c to make sure the patient does not actually die okay okay next is hypoxia 
oxygen delivery is extremely less because airway is narrowed okay so oxygen needs to be managed properly so how do we treat hypoxia we give high concentration of oxygen we do not worry about carbon dioxide retention like in case of copd when we we don't give high concentration of oxygen but in case of severe acute asthma we can give high concentration of oxygen and this high concentration of oxygen is usually not it is not 100% it is 40 to 60% oxygen and this maintains an oxygen saturation above 92 which can be measured by pulse oximetry so airway breathing uh, airway breathing circulation and hypoxia is is corrected these are the first basic steps next we move on to drugs okay the first drugs which come to our mind are steroids and short acting beta 2 agonist steroids take a longer time to act so you have to put steroids and short acting beta 2 agonist together to start the treatment but we will look at them individually so first you start steroid with short acting beta 2 agonist we call it saba Short acting beta 2 agonists are salbutamol, salbutamol and terbutalin. Salbutamol, uh, sal salbutamol is given 5 mg and terbutalin is given 10 mg. Terbutalin is uh, dose is double of salbutamol. And the short acting beta 2 agonist, because they are short acting, you have to repeat short acting beta 2 agonist every 15 to 30 minutes. Now how are you going to give short acting beta 2 agonist? Short acting beta 2 agonist can be given using nebulizer along with your oxygen oxygen delivery system but in case nebulizer is not available meter dose inhaler is also effective but the problem with meter dose inhaler is that every four to six puffs you take of meter dose inhaler you have to every puff of meter dose inhaler gives only 100 microgram so to uh, get the dose up you have to take four to six puffs of meter dose inhaler every 10 minutes and that will give you in every puff will give you 100 microgram so what are the side effects of short acting beta 2 agonist we are giving them every 15 to 30 minutes so we have to uh, keep in mind what the uh, side effects are number one is tachycardia sometimes we can see that the patient who is given short acting beta 2 agonist if we do an ecg sinus tachycardia is present so that may be due to short acting beta 2 agonist there is increased qt interval there is arrhythmia and extremely extremely important is hypokalemia so we have to do serial electrolyte uh, balance check of the patient and see whether potassium levels are maintained or not because hypokalemia again can have very bad effect on muscles and the heart so we have to constantly monitor for development of hypokalemia and if hypokalemia is developed it needs to be corrected salbutamol especially is responsible for hypokalemia so after covering short acting beta 2 agonist so we have given a, uh, we have taken care of uh, airway breathing circulation hypoxia is corrected short acting beta 2 agonist with steroids are started okay so what are the steroids that we can give steroids that we can give are prednisolone that is 30 to 60 milligram oral or we can give hydrocortisone hemisuccinate 200 milligram iv hydrocortisone is given iv and prednisolone is given oral these are important they will take uh, at least uh, half an hour to start so that is why they are mixed with short acting beta 2 agonist ok along with that there is one special uh, category of drug called as anticholinergics they act by uh, acting on M, uh, M receptors and examples are ipratromium, ipratromium bromide what they do is uh, they also reduce this secretion and uh, secretions of the airways and help in redu reduction of the mucosal edema but they have to be give they alone are not effective in severe acute asthma and need to be given along with short acting beta 2 agonists it is given in the dose of 0 0.5 mg it is added to uh, saba or short acting beta 2 agonists but over here if when short, short acting beta 2 agonist was given every 15 to 30 minutes but ipratropium bromide which is an anticholinergic acting by M receptor this is given in a smaller dose 0.5 milligram but every 6 hours and not every 15 to 30 hours 15 to 30 minutes sorry the side effects of uh, ipratropium bromide due to its an <coughs> sorry due to its anticholinergic effects are dry mouth uh, tachycardia and also flushing 
next we move on to steroids uh, st sorry steroids are already done aminophilins aminophilins uh, decrease calcium concentration within the cell therefore helps in smooth muscle relax uh, relaxation the dose is 250 mg aminophilin is always given iv and it is given for 20 minutes if sometimes oral theophylin has already start was already started for the patient if oral theophylin has already been started aminophilin need not be need not, uh, sh should not be should not be given it's not need not it should not be given why because the therapeutic index is extremely low and there is a high possibility of aminophilin uh, serum toxicity for which serum concentration of aminophilin monitoring of serum concentration of aminophilin is extremely important and its therapeutic range is 10 to 20 microgram per ml what about magnesium sulfate does magnesium sulfate has a role yes iv magnesium sulfate also can can be given because magnesium sulfate is a smooth muscle relax relaxant sedatives should be contraindicated because uh, the patient can move into respiratory depression what about fluid correction fluid correction is important because as i said the, one of the complications of severe acute asthma is dehydration and uh, and uh, acidosis and to correct dehydration and acidosis we have to give uh, uh, correct the fluid and for that normal saline with sodium bicarbonate is given sodium bicarbonate takes care of acidosis and normal saline takes care of the fluid correction or ringer lactate can be given ringer lactate is preferred because ringer lactate is most more physiological compared to normal saline potassium correction is important because potassium can be uh, uh, potassium there is hypokalemia which is being caused by salbutamol so potassium correction and potassium monitoring regular regular potassium monitoring is important uh, what about assisted mechanical ventilation assisted mechanical ventilation is indicated in case of cardiopulmonary arrest in case of person who was conscious before but has his consciousness is slowly worsening there's hypercapnia if after doing abgs constantly you keep doing abgs every two hours you find that pseo2 is increasing you need to put the patient on assisted mechanical ventilation if there is acidosis and there are certain special points about intubation that has to be kept in mind intubation can be extremely difficult because of hyper responsive airways there is severe edema so when you try to in intubate the patient there is uh, going to be difficulty that is why intravenous ketamine or intravenous lidocaine before uh, intubating the patient is will be good because intravenous ketamine has a sympathomimetic hence bronchodilator action this is uh, uh, the video on severe acute asthma i hope you liked it uh, follow my channel on daily motion www.dailymotion.com slash medical mania uh, to cover uh, to see other videos and also uh, post comments if you like the video